Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at the biology paper 60610 paper code and we are going to be looking at specifically the six mark planning and investigation question. Now this is a question that most students are afraid of but if you know the right tricks and what to write then you can easily score all the six marks. Now let's look at what the six marks are actually allocated for. Let me just get my highlighter. Okay, so one mark is for you to state what the independent variable is then four marks depend uh, like the details of you measuring the dependent variable two marks for you stating the constant variable one mark for you stating that you should repeat the experiment and one mark for stating a safety precaution okay now out of these marks right you have basically three free marks that you can get that even if you don't understand the question at all free three marks which are the independence variable stating that you repeat the experiment and a relevant safety precaution okay now the independent variable is something that they'll basically give you in the question okay so that's something that you do not need to worry about like they won't directly say that oh this is the independent variable it's something you have to deduce but once you do like a few past papers you'll be easily able to identify them then repeating just saying that repeat the experiment one free mark and a safety precaution is another free mark now over here you'll notice that i've mentioned four marks for the details of measuring dependent variable and two marks for the constant variable now this depends on each question to question each question like each player investigation has its different requirements for example this was the requirement for one of the paper another paper gave one mark for independent variable three marks this time for constant variable two marks for the method you used one mark for as you know our free one mark repeating the experiment and a safety precaution so whatever the case is you are guaranteed three free marks because of the three these three things that we talked about the repeating the safety precaution and independent variable okay but i'm not saying that you should just get the three marks you need to get the six marks and i'm going to show you exactly how now the independent variable is something that you choose okay and it would be stated oops just give me a second yeah and it would be like somehow given to you in the question okay so it is something you are choosing. So the mask scheme says that you should at least give two independent variables, okay? At least two, but to be safe, always give three. For example, if the independent variable is, um, let's say temperature, okay? Then say that in like, this, is, this should be your first line. Use at least three different temperatures. Then you can say, for example, 10 degrees celsius 25 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius you see i've given three examples with the data and the units right that's something you have to do for the independent variable give the units give the data and say that you should use at least three uh okay then moving on to the dependent variable now this is a variable that you measure be very careful now this is like i'm talking about both the question one and for the this thing uh for the a six mark question what you're going to measure is different from what has an effect on it now we are going to look at the question below so you'll understand it better okay so dependent variable always going to be something you measure at the end of the experiment now constant variable you should give a minimum of three if you know more than three go ahead right all the uh, constant variables that you know constant variables are variables that if they are changed that will affect the result of the experiment so these are something you keep constant to ensure that your result is fair okay so as i said you should give at least three for example over here while well, this mark scheme i gave only two marks for constant variable this one over here gave three so you never know if a maximum is giving four per se and i think four it's a bit too much maximum should be three but just give at least three at least three okay and these are something easy to identify or deduce from the questions once you solve like three four past papers you start getting the hang of it so the key to uh, getting all the six marks for this paper is to solve as many uh, planning investigation questions that you can then moving on to safety precautions now safety precautions have to be relevant to the um, experiment you're doing you can't just randomly say any safety experiment that you read from chat gpt okay or oh, that's just an example so but if you can't remember if you can't like the think of any safety precaution from the experiment then just mention any that you can remember okay if you can't remember any of them just mention any of them that you know if the examiner is in happy mood you might just get the mask okay but 
it's uh, something that you can easily uh, get from the question for example if your question has anything to do with you cutting something just go ahead and say that cut on a flat surface or cut away from the hand or just to be safe just say goggles and gloves use goggles and gloves when uh, doing the experiment this is something that you should do when you can't find a relevant um a uh, relevant safety precaution or sometimes this itself goggles and gloves is a relevant precaution so just be careful over here too now the method for the method it depends on the experiment okay i can't say you that i can't tell you that for the okay now for uh, this is a definite uh, method that you can use to get the free marks okay no the method will depend on the kind of experiment that you're doing however you can still get some free marks over here if you mention the apparatus apparatus like you just mentioning the apparatus itself can give you marks now some of the uh, uh, apparatus that you can use if your experiment has something to do with you changing the light intensity say that you'll use a dimmer switch if you're keeping uh, so the apparatus that i'm mentioning here you can use it to keep your constant variables as well for example if you have to if you have to keep your a pH constant, you can say you use a, a buffer solution. You can, if you're measuring the angle of something protractor, if you're measuring the length of something, use a ruler. Very important. This is, let me just even change the color to highlight it. This is one of the most important apparatus needed, okay? Maybe like when you're doing a temperature, don't go and say Benson burner or anything. If you're controlling the temperature at a constant, okay, or you're changing it, you always almost almost always go for thermostatically controlled water bath okay now what this does is that it controls the temperature at one specific temperature it doesn't change okay like a benson burner once you heat it it might change um, values but this will keep it constant then you can let me just switch back to our red you can also use a heat shield you can use a calorimeter one after the video just google up what all these apparatus look like in their job you can also use a ph meter now this is literally free mark just saying that repeat the investigation at least twice okay like the you should say how many times instead of saying twice you can say maybe three times or four times and then compare results just say this and be happy go your way okay so always remember repeating experiment and some of these basically give free marks now i have an example over here now this is very important for question one okay let's read the question it says a student investigates the effect of acid concentration on the rate of diffusion in an agar jelly okay the student was given three test tubes containing bromothymol blue indicator and agar jelly bromothymol blue is a blue indicator that turns yellow in the presence of an acid the student uses this method blah 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 uh, this was one of the questions which said identify the independent variable and the dependent variable in this investigation identify means that we have you're taking information from the information that they have already given to you now a common mistake done by most students is that they think that a student in investigation the effect of acid concentration okay so i'm changing my acid concentration so that will be my independent variable effect on what on the rate of diffusion in agar jelly so this will be my dependent variable my friend you are wrong and why you're wrong is because you're not measuring the rate of diffusion of the agar jelly when you read carefully further in the question it says that measure the height of the yellow agar jelly so remember i told you dependent variable is something you measure okay so what will your dependent variable be your dependent variable here will be height of the yellow agar jelly so that is what you will state over here and this is what you will state over here now if you don't believe me here it is this was the question i was talking about so this is how the question looked like it mentioned it over here now you see they didn't even mention it oh in the information they gave they mentioned it in the question like where you're supposed to draw a table a separate video will come on how you should draw the table so don't worry that is why you should read carefully and always remember that dependent variable is something you measure okay and that's what you'll state here even in the mask scheme height of yellow agar not what was stated over here which was uh rate of diffusion okay that's a common mistake so make sure you avoid that and get your free marks so that's how you can easily get the six marks in paper six all the best guys let me know how your paper was and yeah till then tada.